Have you ever heard of the Mercedes EQB? Possibly not. It's been a bit under the radar. Not many people have heard about this car, but it actually holds a really unique position in the market. It's four-wheel drive, premium, and seven-seater. And when it comes to seven-seater electric vehicles, there's not much choice out there. Tesla Model X, you might say. Well, we haven't been able to buy the Model X in this country for a couple of years. The new one is coming. When will it arrive? We don't know. And the Model X is actually quite a bit bigger than this as well. Then we've got the EQV and the ID Buzz and the Vivaro E-Life and some van-derived kind of electric seven-seaters. But they're, again, kind of a different marketplace, really. There's a Tesla Model Y seven-seater, but we don't get that in this country either. However, I have tested one of those in LA. So this video is going to be about the Mercedes EQB seven-seater. See what my opinion of, is of it. Give you some comparisons to the Tesla Model Y seven-seater. And I'm going to take it to a drive, see what I think of it. And also do the test for efficiency and real-world range on a pretty gloomy, cold, wet and windy day like today. And I can't start this video until I've said, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Lots of our viewers are not. So hit the subscribe button now if you're not already. Hit the bell icon for notifications. Right, let's get on with it. So I want to get seven people in this, one of the first tests to do because the Model Y as a seven-seater was a bit uh, comical and a bit compromised. So uh, let's try that in a minute. It's quite a different shape, this, so a bit more boxy. It might have some more space. So let's get on to that in a minute. But I want to just cover what this exact model is here in case you're comparing. This is an AMG Line Premium EQB 350. So there's a 300 and 350. The 350's got a bit more power to it. They're all four-wheel drive and all seven-seaters in the UK as well. Used market from under 50,000, new to just over 60,000. So it does sit right in the same price category as this. You've got a nearly 70 kilowatt hours gross battery, 66 and a half usable, 0 to 60 in 6.2 seconds. And anything I haven't said will be listed in some text here. So the middle row splits and slides back and forth. And then you lift the back seats by pulling a little tab there. And then you lift up the headrest here. And this is the boot space with the seats up. Is there any storage underneath? Uh, not much, enough to put uh, that, <laughs> pretty much. So but this is where the kind of square shape of the EQB might come to its own for a bit of extra room in the back. Because if you look at the Model Y, this is a much more sloped roof line and really quite different. So we're just gathering our office staff and everybody here now. And we'll get seven of us in this. See how we go. Okay, this is going to include you as well, Gint. So there's seven of us, seven-seater car. Let's go, let's get in it. Ha <laughs> 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 All right, let's get the kids in the back. Come on, kiddies, in you get. If you pull the bed at the top, it should slide forward as well. Oh, this is, is this Jaden, who's six foot eight, basketball player Jaden? So you you claim yourself as sort of six two, don't you? Yeah, with high heels on. I'm okay in the front, not too bad. So I'm six foot, you're six foot. How tall are you, Sonny? Five eight. Okay. Amy. Five five. Five five. And Gintz should be right here. In fact, this has got quite a lot of room. Like, oh, come yeah. forward a bit, Gintz. So, yeah. with seven of us in, right, so me being six foot in the front, like, I'm actually, I'm not, like, squished up at the front. So I'm fine. So behind me then, Serge. Three, yeah. and, okay, not bad. And how is it for width of the three of you in the back? Yeah. It's fine. There's yeah. a bit of yeah. space. Because like this doesn't seem like that big a car on the outside, but... It does, actually, right? If I sit like this, I'm, I'm fine. It feels like a fairly narrow car as well, so I'm surprised you're that comfortable. Yeah. So, Jaden in the back, like, you're actually okay, are you? I think Joe's making a bit of a fuss there, because to be honest, no, no, Joe, Joe's making a fuss? No, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just sat normally. Yeah, but that's because you, you don't want to mess up your hair. So, you probably wouldn't drive to the south of France with seven of us, but yeah. you'd get a lift home from the pub. Not even southbound. Yeah. Do you know what? That's surprisingly good, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to try the back as well now because I've been in the back of a Model Y 7 seater and it was comical. So let me give a comparison, but thank you for that. It's actually better than I thought because it doesn't seem like a big car. Okay, let me try it for myself. See, that middle bit doesn't fold, which then makes it a little bit more awkward. But let's see. So my, my knees are quite upright and it is a bit compromised, but it's way better than the Model Y, I have to say. Now that's cut to a clip of me trying to get in the back of the Model Y. I'm in here, ow, that was my head. Okay, this is me <laughs> in the back seats. I'm gonna see if I can get this seat down this position. Hopefully I can release it again. Um, so I'm in, but I had really couldn't do a journey. I can't sit upright in here, ow. Um, so, I have to say, this is for kids only. So then I think the issue is 
like this. So what I found in Model Y is I could just about squeeze in the back, but I really was folded. It's not far off being, if, it, if they could just, an just another couple of inches and <laughs> we'd be okay. Um, I mean, if I sit like that, like, Jaden was talking about slouching, but the trouble is you can't really slouch much when there's not much leg room. It's, it's so nearly actually fine because the roof there is quite high. Yeah. It's only this last bit that dips down here, probably for the hinges for the tailgate, yeah. which will stick to. So if I just sit forward a little bit, if you just come forward a little bit like that, it's actually not too bad, but it's just getting right back. You can't do. But imagine the Model Y was like this. Hang on. <laughs> it's like that. Oh, this and so that's company. where that was impossible. And actually, yeah. although my knees are right up, uh, you can actually still get somebody there. So... It's a lot better than the Model Y, but not as big as a Model X, it's a kid's thing, of course. It's not, it's, not, it's not adults for any length of time in the back. No, no. Okay, what I'm going we'll to do now is take it for a drive. I haven't driven it yet. And what I'm going to do is a, a route which involves some country roads, some motorway and some city driving. I've just reset my trip computers and I've started with 35% battery. Uh, the car hasn't been driven today, so it's cold, but I've got the heating on. I'm in a T-shirt. Uh, so very much real world driving. I'm just going to use a normal driving mode as well. See what efficiency we get and see what the real world distance and range would be for this car. So let's give it a test, get to know a bit more and then I can give you some more opinions. I'm in a 30 miles per hour zone at the moment and it's just coming to 60 miles now. So I'm going from 30 to 60, test its overtaking capability. Go. Yeah, pull's pretty good. There we go, that's 60. That didn't take long, did it? This is a four-wheel drive vehicle, but what it does here, if I just accelerate lightly, it just uses rear-wheel drive. If I accelerate firmer, it uses four-wheel drive. And if I lift off, it uses the two motors to regenerate electricity back into the battery. If I just lift off a tiny bit or kind of coast in, it just uses one motor. So it's constantly moving between using both motors or single motor, depending on how much you're slowing down or accelerating. So very bumpy, twisty, undulating country roads. It is nice and smooth. It has comfort suspension. It is comfortable. It's certainly much smoother than a Tesla Model Y. A Tesla Model Y really is quite firm. Now they are coming out with their own comfort suspension and we should see that on a lot of 2023 cars that should start arriving soon. So I'll be keen to test this new comfort suspension on the Model Y. But this, without a shadow of a doubt, is way more comfortable and absorbent. The damping's much softer. The steering isn't as sharp. It's not as dynamic as the Model Y. It's not as quick as the Model Y, at least in the Model Y dual motor and performance versions. But this pulls pretty well and it steers pretty well. Got good grip on the front. It actually doesn't lean either. It's pretty good. And the ride is comfortable. Plus, it feels nice and smooth and quiet in here. So, first impression so far, pretty good. There's a vehicle coming there. Let's not drive into a van. Right. Let's pull out the junction. And I can put my foot down and it gains grip because it's four-wheel drive. So, no scrabbling of front wheels like you do see in Hyundai Kona, for example, and a couple of the cars, which are front-wheel drive. Even the Mercedes UKV would scrabble the front tires there because that's front-wheel drive. So, so far, confidence inspiring, comfortable, quiet, quite reasonable. The brakes of this car just saved the pheasant's life, so they're good. You know, this car really has sort of been under the radar, I never really gave it a second glance. I've heard of it, I haven't known that much about them. I'm really quite pleasantly surprised. It really offers surprise in space for what is quite a compact car. I mean, I can reach this glass window there, which I'm nowhere near really had reached out the Model X, for example. So it really is a nice size for UK roads, which are rather narrow. I'm about to go over to Jersey for a few days. I imagine it's great over there, so it's not too wide, not too big. But seven seats when you need it. It's refined and it's comfortable. It's quieter than a lot of cars out there. It's definitely more comfortable than a Model Y. That performance is useful when you've got a, it's a really short slipway onto this 70 miles per hour dual carriageway. And it's able to just quickly nip up to speed, slot into a gap. And that's where the instant power and torque from electric motor really is brilliant. But without making any drama or fuss out of it, I can just quickly ease up into the flow of traffic at, well, in theory, 70 miles an hour, but now I'm by the truck. But you know what I mean. It's good. So it's good on country roads. Now for some motorway. I don't have any wing cameras, so when I indicate, like the Model Y, so the Model Y when you indicate, it shows you a view on the screen of your wing camera, so it's extra protection for blind spot warning. 
Oh, I like that. On the country roads, it's good. On the motorway, it's good, relaxed, smooth, quiet. Now for some city driving. I'm going to actually make sure the regen's on its maximum setting, which tends to help with just kind of that one pedal drive as you're going through traffic. What this doesn't do, though, like now, I have to go to the brake pedal to come to that final stop. And what I do like about a number of cars, including the Tesla Model Y, is that you've just got one pedal drive. You just lift off and the car will come to a complete stop and then put it into hold. And that's nice to have. So after that mixed bag of driving for nearly an hour, 27 miles, bit of everything, in not the most ideal conditions, I average 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. So multiply that by the 66 usable, you've got about 224 miles of range. However, I also work in a second way. I use 12% of the battery to do 27 miles. And so if you pro rata that out, that also comes to about 225 miles of range. So I think no doubt you could make it do more, you could make it do less, but that's a pretty good achievable over 200 mile range without any real effort. So I think that's actually quite sensible for a car which can hold seven people. So a quick look around the outside. So maybe it doesn't look quite as aerodynamic as a Model Y. Which do you think is the better looking car though? The more traditional looking Mercedes or the more opinionated Model Y. Some people really don't like to look at a Model Y, but it probably is the more aerodynamic. Anyway, on the outside of the Mercedes here, we've got some very good LED high performance headlights. They're good. Got that solid grille at the front here. And they've got this little bubble here for the camera. And then we've got some front parking sensors. Let's see if there's any storage under the front. Nope. This one's on 19 inch wheels, 235 50R19s. Uh, along the side, well, it's not too much to talk about really. We've got roof rails integrated here. We've got the charge port flap is here. Of course, we've got CCS rapid charging and AC charge as well. Rapid charge is at just over 100 kilowatts, so not as fast charging as a Model Y, but should top you up quite nicely in just over half an hour. It is much more boxy than the Model Y though, isn't it? You can see the two cars side by side here, but that gives you that little bit more room on the inside. So it's a bit more functional. Possibly not the most sexy car, not the most exciting, but certainly very practical. The back's got a nice LED light strip across here and we've got parking sensors and of course a camera tucked up behind the badge so it doesn't get all dirty. The reversing camera is tucked behind the badge which is a feature I really like. We just did a video about reversing cameras so if you want to see that check out our other recent videos. But having the camera behind the badge there keeps it nice and clean so it doesn't get covered in all the dirt on the back of the car. So we've seen what it's like with seven people in it. Let's now fold the seats down and show you the boot with the back seats down. And then it looks a little bit like this. So you've got a kind of nice flat square load area and then this middle row seats can come backwards and these split fold in three sections. You can see this middle section here can fold separately as well. There are a couple of USB ports in the back here as well. So keep the kids happy, a little bit of storage. And then this would be for a load cover if you wanted it. And there's a couple of convenient little bag hooks here as well. So if you've got a shopping bag, hook it on that or your takeaway stops it falling over. Nice little touch. Let's have a quick look at the inside here then. So compared to a Tesla Model Y, it's much more traditional. It's got much more buttons. It's much more conventional kind of layout compared to the Model Y's single screen and everything's on the screen. So some people will like this and some people will appreciate the Model Y. I'm certainly very used to the Model Y now, so I've got no problem with it. But this one, I guess it is more traditional. So you've got separate buttons for adjusting the wing mirrors and it's separate lever down here to release the steering column adjustment. So it will suit some. I know some prefer that. Generally in here, it feels premium, it's good quality, and it really is quite nice. Now there are some slightly harder plastics down, for example here, the glove box, but it's okay, it's a nice little mixture here. So this has got the MBUX entertainment system from Mercedes, which is nice and quick and easy to use. You can touch screen it, and you've also got the pad down here, so you can control things from the pad here. And you can actually also control various function from the little touch pads on the steering wheel here, both for this screen and the screen right in front of me. And then we've got separate controls for the air conditioning, climate control, some very nice snazzy looking air vents. I do like the look of those, but I'm a Mercedes, some very snazzy ambient lighting in here. We've got a separate stop start button, which again, I do like actually in the Tesla where you just get in and it's on and you get out and it goes off. So I kind of like that. I do like the Model Y has your phone as a key. This still has separate keys, but it's not too bad in here at all. I really quite like it. The seat here on this model at least is a manual adjustment for height and backrest. So in the Tesla, they're always electric. I do have adjustable thigh support though, which the Tesla doesn't have. Although that's only for the driver, nothing for the passenger here. 
Center console, functional, got a wireless phone charger, USB connection, couple of cup holders here. We've got some adjustments for the driving mode. Again, there's pad for controlling the screen and some shortcuts of different menus on the screen there. Works quite well. We've got a little storage compartment down in here, a couple more USBs and a compartment here, which is reasonably deep, but it's much smaller than the Tesla. So again, with the Tesla, I do like the center console there. You've got the two wireless phone chargers, nice simple layout, but a big storage area, big storage area in here as well. So that does hold more of your kind of knickknacks as you're driving along, but it's a comfortable car. It feels premium and it's a nice place to be. Oh. And also like, this has also got a glass roof like the Tesla, but this actually has an opening sunroof and we also have blinds. So if it's a really hot sunny day, you don't feel the heat on the top of your head, I can close the blinds off as well. And that's something the Tesla doesn't have. In the back behind my seating position, it's quite good. I've got some quite good knee room. I can get my feet under that seat in front and I sit a little bit higher than the front seat. So I still got like quite a good view out. Sufficient headroom, I'm six foot tall, so it's quite a comfortable place to be and the gap between the seat and the floor is sensible as well. So it's not too bad. It does feel narrower than the Model Y, but you can get three people in if you need to, much like the Model Y. We've got some uh, coat hooks up here, electric window buttons, some harder plastics lower down, but this here all feels quite reasonable. Some exposed paint from the bodywork there. I guess that could be covered ideally. And there's only one USB charging port in the back here. And if you've got kids, you might as well have two really, mind you. So you've, you can easily put two in this gap as well. A little bit of storage down here. There is a transmission tunnel type ridge here, but it's quite small, so it doesn't really impede too much. I can actually move these seats around a little bit as well. So I can go back and go forward to so make more room in the back there. And then I can adjust the backrest. However, I do need to find these little toggles to do that. So I could sit a little bit more upright if there's something big and square in the boot there. But these little toggles, I guess, it'd be nice just to have a little lever down the side, I think, but they must have done it for a reason. And of course, we've got Isofix on the outer seats in the back. But for what, it seems like quite a small car. It's all right, quite nice. Center armrest, a couple of cup holders there. That folds away, that folds down, so you can put bits of wood or skis through the middle. All quite practical, all quite functional. The Tesla used to activate the child locks through the screen in the center console, but this one's just a traditional kind of lever here, which is easier. You let me know in the comments below. And so there we have the EQB. Like I say, it's gone under the radar a little bit, a bit of an unknown, but really quite unique in its market. And I've actually been really impressed by it. I never really thought much about it, but it came in yesterday. And I have to say, really impressive. It might not be the most dynamic, it might not be the most sexy, but it is really refined, it's really comfortable, and it's very practical. I really like the size of it. It's not a massive, great SUV, yet it's still practical. It's four-wheel drive. You can certainly go through a gravel car park without getting stuck. It's just a nice, good, balanced all-rounder. It does sit in a really unique place in the market, and I've been really quite impressed. Good range, refined, comfortable. Very good. So EQB, yeah, big thumbs up for me, actually. I actually really like it. I think you should consider it if you need a seven-seater. There we go. That's it for me. Thank you for watching. See you on the next video very soon. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel as well. Remember, a lot of viewers are not subscribed, so I've been saying this more recently. Make sure you are subscribed and you see lots more EV videos coming up. Hey everyone, thanks for watching our videos. If you like our content and want to see more, don't forget to not only subscribe, but also hit the bell icon for notifications so you don't miss any new videos as they're uploaded. Plus, we're also on Instagram. Just look up R Simons or RSEV. Us, we're on Facebook and Twitter. So lots of news, stories, and things as we go on each one of those channels.